The United Nations announced this year that the number of people suffering from chronic hunger is estimated at 925 million worldwide. On the 16th of October 2010, UN World Food Day took place. In Dublin, the focus was the Gresham Hotel, where those working for international development met to discuss the hunger crisis facing the world. Uh, Garta was founded about 45 years ago and for most of our existence we have been conducting projects and programs in developing countries. In uh, many cases with Irish volunteers and doing things ourselves. And over the years we have gradually developed partnership with partners in the developing countries and in our partner countries that are particularly addressing fun hunger, food security, water, livelihoods and linking those with health. But more recently what we have been focusing on is that we need to move beyond what we do ourselves. We're a small country. We need to try and galvanise public opinion in Ireland and worldwide in relation to tackling the greatest scourge that the world has, which is hunger. There's a thousand million chronically hungry people and every six seconds a child dies from hunger. Well, the main reason for a Gurt Food Day is to bring um, people an awareness, to create, first of all, an awareness uh, of the the great hunger that exists in the world. Um, I suppose most people, but sometimes we, we tend to, to forget. The other, the other reason, I suppose, is to make sure that we have a good networking. After all, Goethe was set up uh, on the prompting of FAO to our own department, uh, Department of, of Agriculture. What would you be hoping to learn and take back to Rome from your experience here? Um, Many things, but of course Gorta is a very respected um, NGO, uh, you do fantastic work, you have over the years had some best practice which we can learn uh, from, but also the history of Ireland is one history of conquering hunger, if I can hear the magic on how you did it. That would be very, very interesting because, I mean, Gorta and FAO's objectives are the same, to overcome hunger as a common enemy for humanity. So if we can learn from one another, I will be listening keenly to the presentations tomorrow and trying to get some vignettes of what we can apply and make uh, FAO's work on overcoming hunger better. Gota is, as you know, is an Irish organization and it's, it's got five thematic areas. And within the five, you will see that almost all these thematic areas, PRDO as an organization, is also doing almost similar work. So we collaborated and Gota supports most of our projects in Malawi. The Thousand Days Initiative is something you've spoken about prominently in the number, recent number of times. Mm -hmm. Why is that the direct focus of your campaign? Well, increasingly, scientific uh, research is showing that the first thousand days of a child's existence, from the very moment of conception right up until their second birthday, are the crucial thousand days in their whole lifetime. And if you don't get their development right, their physical development and their intellectual development right during those crucial 1,000 days, those children can be consigned to a life of underdevelopment, indeed misery and unfulfilled potential. So if we can get the nutrition right in terms of the proteins, the complex mix of uh, micronutrients, carbohydrates, nutrition, uh, uh, vitamins, micronutrients and so forth, uh, that we can get their development right during those crucial 1,000 days. Because without getting it right during those days, uh, the damage is irreversible. You'll never be able to recover that lost ground. Me and a couple of people from my school and another school in Dublin put together a petition really um, to try and pressurise and encourage people across the world and really the world leaders um, to meet the goals of the Millennium Development Goals that they set out in 2000, just to meet those goals by 2015 and really try to uh, strive to end world hunger. And um, in writing the petition, um, we really all were really enthusiastic about it and everybody put forward their views and came up with a really good petition. Samuel Johnson once said that great works are performed not by strength, but by perseverance. And really that's what Gorta has been doing for Ireland. It has been doing our persevering with this issue over many years. Not perseverance in the stoical sense of acceptance and putting up with, but quite the reverse. 
perseverance in the sense of we have an answer, we have a plan, we can get out of this, we can get through this, we can change this, we can solve this problem and we're going to keep at it and we're going to keep nagging, advocating and doing until the problem is resolved. Climate change is having an impact on the developing world and if we can't provide solutions on climate change the impacts will, will be most severely felt in the developing world. So we've got to have a partnership approach at a national and international level. We've got to work with the 27 member states of the European Union and with the developing world to put in place policies and legislation that reduces the amount of emissions globally so as to stabilise the world's temperatures. Because the people who are feeling climate change first are in sub-Saharan Africa. And you're seeing that through floods and through famine. So if we can tackle climate change, if we can get that right, it helps in the fight against hunger. Well, the Irish Country Women Association are affiliated to the Associated Country Women of the World. And that's where we help out women in Africa or other countries. Our members would contribute uh, financially to a fund that, uh, that goes into our head office in London of the Associated Country Women of the World and they would identify projects in various different countries and financially would help women to set up a business or other activity that would be of benefit to them. Karen, as a prominent Irish broadcaster and writer, what role do you feel the media has to play in eradicating world hunger and international development? Well, I mean, I suppose the role we play is to carry stories about maybe hunger around the world or broadcasting stories about it. It's always a challenge, I think, for the media to highlight issues that maybe come up the whole time about global hunger. How do you make a story such as global hunger, a billion people virtually and you know, starving in the world, something that people will continue to listen to? And I, I suppose a lot of people out there were so weary, we so jaded with wars, jaded with you know, stories about starvation, that our threshold for maybe listening to these stories or reading about them um, decreases or increases actually I should say all the time and we want to hear less and less about these stories so it's a big challenge for the media to continue to draw attention to these stories and make them relevant for people and I suppose you, if you want to look at it purely from an Irish point of view we're suffering an awful lot economically right now we've a lot of problems on our own doorstep and trying to make stories about other people suffering in other parts of the world is going to be more of a challenge, I think. Three years ago, I was actually at a conference and I happened to be talking to Brian Henrotty, CEO of Goethe, and we were chatting about what we're, both our organisations were doing overseas. And I told him that we were just about to set up in India and he started telling me about the project that Goethe were financing in Tamil Nadu. And the thought just struck me wouldn't this be a great first project to have in India? So he explained the project. It was Goethe's biggest project that they had ever funded. And I just looked to see what could we bring to it. And what we did was, we're, we're engineers, architects, and project managers. So we helped coordinate the layout of the design, make it more efficient, and put project controls in place to make sure the project went well. A lot of middle-aged people and older people think, oh, just what can I do, you know? And I would suggest them, why don't you use the skills you have, the management skills you have. If you're in business, you're a very good manager, you know? I, let me give you a for instance, which a guy pointed out to me once. We have problems about distributing drugs, distributing food. How do you do it? How do you get out the stuff? And he said, when you look at distribution, the best distributor in the world is Coca-Cola. You can get on the top of the Himalayas, you can get on the bottom of the ocean, you know. So go, if you're in business, you know, business things. This needs to be run as a business. Any philanthropy has to be run as a business. It's not sort of Pollyanna land, you know, you have to have a business plan, you have to have business structure, you have to look at sustainability, you have to look at employees. So for business people, this is what they do every day. Just transfer your skills. For more information about Goethe and their work to eradicate world hunger, log on to www.goethe.org.